Please don't sue us. Disclaimer. Before we begin, I really feel that I should tell you something that may come as a shock to some of you. I really enjoyed this film. Don't get me wrong, I know it wasn't a particularly good or, let's say, intellectual film, but I really enjoyed the experience of watching it. And due to the general fan reception of this film, I feel that this is the kind of thing I should warn you of before we get started, rather than springing it on you during the video. Okay, let's go. Boy, for a black site, they're very specific about its location. That's a title card, not a signpost. The movie doesn't need to keep fictional government secrets from its audience. Got lucky with Superman who shared our values. This sounds like something a person would say who hadn't seen Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. At least if our values include not murdering thousands of innocent civilians. The word murder implies intention. What Superman did was at most manslaughter, which honestly I'd be prepared to forgive him for because he did it while he was saving the world. Is Deadshot great with guns because he naturally has amazing hand-eye coordination? Or is it because he has this incredible scope that lines everything up for him? I'm gonna say that maybe, just maybe, it's a combination of the two. First off, the murder of Robin is played like some trifling thing that we get a blip of text about. Second off, this is the second movie in the DCU this year to hint at a Robin dies story that would have been way better than the two movies we actually got. Why do you assume that a movie that features the death of Robin would be better? It would still have been created, written, and produced by the same people. Surely it would suffer from many of the same flaws, no? Or is simply containing the death of Robin something that you think would make a film work? Did you enjoy the film? Well, nothing about it was good except Robin did die, so yes I did. I need a machine gun. Okay, I did warn you that I like this film, and here comes the inevitable praise that I will give it. That line delivery, combined with, you know, the actual line itself, was brilliant. In the theatre when I watched this, it gave me frickin' chills. And I just had to take this moment out to praise it. After being threatened by a tiny knife from a woman that's trapped in a drowned car, Batman decides the best course of action is to treat her like the producers of this movie treat the audience. I can't be the only person who actually liked this movie, can I? So what, it wasn't that good. It's still entertaining. And isn't that the purpose of a film? To entertain you? Digger Harkness. The problem with doing a comic book movie where the general public only knows, like, one of your major characters is that you end up wasting the first third of your film doing stupid introduction montages. May I remind you that people go into the majority of films not knowing any of the characters? Yet very few of those movies have introduction montages like this. It wasn't a necessity due to the use of unknown characters. It was a stylistic choice to try something new and different, and personally, I liked it a lot. I moved to, uh... Authorize Mandoir to establish Task Force X. Maybe just the witch. All we really need is the witch, I think. We've seen one of several metahumans we're being offered. And we have no reason to believe that the other metahumans we're being offered are any less powerful than this one is. But then again, why would you have all of them when you can just have one? Genius! But without you minding her, your lady friend stays here strapped to a board in a drug-induced coma. This movie literally has no good guys. That is not a sin. Sin is really just sin, sort of an observation. Sin, sin, sin. Ding. That's now available on iTunes for only four ninety nine. I'm just kidding. I haven't got anything on iTunes. Although I wouldn't object to you paying me the four ninety nine anyway. While I do believe Joker is OCD enough to create this circle of knives, this is clearly a case of someone thought of a cool looking shot, so they put it in the movie even if it didn't make sense. This is worse than V for Vendetta's dominoes. I mean, you say that, but going by what's on screen here, there were loads more dominoes in V's domino V than there are knives in the Joker's knife circle. Plus, dominoes are really gimmicky and they fall over really easily. So I bet that setting up all those dominoes took V a fair few attempts. I will admit that this is bad, but by no means is it worse than what V did. <laughs> Wait, what? Since they worship something, that something has to destroy them? Couldn't she destroy the world in a million other ways that aren't nearly as fallible? Hey, she never said that she has to use a machine because humans worship machines now. She simply said that it angers her that humans no longer worship her, and therefore she will destroy them using a machine. I'm just saying it's a very strong possibility that maybe, just maybe, she's planning on using a machine because it's for her the most practical way to do it. And she's just saying it in that way because she too appreciates the irony. The first non-human entity ever attacks Midway City, and instead of calling Batman, who we apparently hate because he's a vigilante, we call the Suicide Squad, entirely made up of law-breaking dickholes. Makes sense. Okay, so if for some reason you're watching my video without having seen the original Sins video, this might not be that apparent to you. But Jeremy Sins, the Suicide Squad as a concept, a lot. An annoyingly high proportion of the Sins in that video are just Jeremy going, Why are you getting bad guys to do it? You could just get good guys to do it. And to that Jeremy, who apparently sounds like Captain Jack Sparrow, if Captain Jack Sparrow were voiced by Thomas Tomscott Ridgewell, I would say this. Maybe it's a bit of a far-fetched idea, but one sin would be sufficient. 
You don't need to bring it up at every available opportunity. You think it's a stupid idea, we get it. It's okay, move on. Sin something else, you don't need to get bogged down in this. We won't define how much power that is, or if you sharing it makes you any weaker, but just roll with it. What do you want her to do? Express the amount of power in watts? The voices. <laughs> I'm kidding, jeez. That's not what they really said. Okay, so I'll just deliver this line. Whoa, where's all this fan fiction coming from? Here comes Slipknot, the man who can climb anything. That is literally all the character development this movie will give this asshole before killing him suddenly. But even if that hadn't been the case, I'd have sent the fact that the great climber guy was named like he's an unkeepable prisoner. What do climbing walls and slipping knots have to do with one another? I do understand and appreciate your criticism here. This character was introduced purely as a plot device. And the movie makes no effort to even hide that. From the beginning, you can tell that he's not going to be an important player in the Suicide Squad. And you can tell that because he doesn't get any kind of introductory montage like the others do. And because of that, it's really obvious right from the start that he is going to die. I'm not going to try and argue against that. What I am going to try and argue, however, is that it's not actually a problem with the movie. The movie did need a character to die as a plot device to show the Suicide Squad that the neck bomb things actually do work. And that's the role that Slipknot here is playing. Sure, a lot of other movies and TV shows will spend a lot of time introducing all their characters, and spend an equal amount of time introducing each character, including the ones that are going to die. Why do they do this? Well, that's so that we can be surprised by their deaths. When a film presents a character as a central character, and then that character dies, the audience learns that none of the characters they thought were central characters are actually safe, and that anyone could die at any moment. That's a nice trick to add suspense to things, and to keep an audience guessing. It makes the danger feel more real and adds to a sense of suspense because you know that none of the characters are actually safe from death. That's a perfectly okay way to do things, but it's not the only way to do things. And Suicide Squad has accepted that it's not going to surprise anyone and is no longer trying to. So it doesn't bother spending extra time introducing characters that it knows aren't going to be important. And honestly, for Suicide Squad, I think that was the right call. It wasn't going to surprise us anyway, and this way it still doesn't surprise us, so nothing was lost. Her sword traps the souls of its victims. Sounds like we should have recruited her for this task force rather than a bunch of criminals. But they did recruit her for this task force. That's, you know, why she's here. You can't send a movie for saying you think it should have done something when the thing you think it should have done is the thing that it did. Because that would just be a win. It's great the Joker is coming for <laughs> Slipknot, introduced a mere eight minutes ago, is already dead. I refer you back to my previous comment on this. Movie offers a new entry into the most useless and forgettable villains for the good guys to mow down contest, instantly challenging the Kree from the Avengers and the zombies from I Am Legend. Hey, I thought you said this movie had no good guys. Joker texts without internal punctuation, and is basically my Aunt Tilly. Hey, that's the second Joker text in a row that could just be misconstrued as them sexting. Also, is now a good time to point out that for his profile picture, the Joker has a stylized emblem of his face? I mean, it's nicely designed. Did he actually spend some of his time and money getting a graphic designer to do this for him? That is just a mean lady. Yeah, movie, this is the time for one-liner jokes, just after the unnecessary murder of several innocents. Murder, then one-liner. That's the comedy formula laid forth by Jerry Lewis, I think. Because, if we know anything about criminal sociopaths, it's that they have an excellent sense of decorum, and have excellent gauges of when wisecrack remarks would be appropriate. The military bombs the shit out of this helicopter, and they all survive, and god damn it, the I have to put up with to make Sins videos. And then Harley survives this fall. Jesus Christ, I'm starting to think the safest location in this movie is in a crashing helicopter. Why even have a helicopter crash if everybody's gonna survive all of them? This movie is a series of helicopter crashes and people eating large pieces of meat. Also, you survive a helicopter crash, and you survive a helicopter crash, and- That right there was five consecutive sins for the same thing. I mean, come on, Jeremy, why not just pick out your favorite and cut the rest out? If you really want to include them somewhere, why not make an outtakes reel? Which, <clears throat> by the way, if you go to the Sin Sins playlist, you can find exclusive clips and content that didn't quite make the final cut, including outtakes, bloopers, and that's, that's it. Just a lot of outtakes and bloopers. Your daughter writes you every day. And I hand-selected seven of those daily letters to include in this small bundle. There are actually eight letters in that pile, not seven. But that's okay. It's not like you've ever expressed that you have a problem with people making very minor mistakes. Oh, oh wait. Captain Boomerang throws a boomerang, which apparently doesn't boomerang at all, but flies like a drone into Enchantress's lair, and has a camera on it that broadcasts through his phone. But Jeremy, without that, we wouldn't have got to see that he uses a Samsung phone. And you know, that right there is some important product placement. Hey, Kron! Here's something to do after the entire movie of you being worthless. Thanks for being nearby. To be fair, some of the characters in this film being useless is quite believable. A lot more believable than all the characters happening to get a job to do. It would be quite the coincidence that if by the end of this, all the characters had just happened to land themselves in a situation where they were the most useful person. All in all, this chick was pretty worthless during this movie. Name one thing she did. 
I refer you back to that previous thing that I just said. But wait, don't go anywhere yet, because... You guys enjoyed it for Deadpool, so here it is for Suicide Squad. Spoilers? Good thing we all saw and loved Batman v Superman, eh? Right? You guys know you loved it. We did not. And I'll be honest, that might be because I've just not seen it yet, but I still, you know, didn't. And if I ever do see it, I kind of don't expect to like it anyway. And this is the introduction of this film's main theme. I mean, obviously he's not going to shoot his daughter, but there's more going on with Deadshot's character arc that starts right here with what he does as much as with what he doesn't say. Love you, Daddy. Unfortunately, most of his lines are about how much he cares about his daughter, because apparently a movie audience is incapable of understanding something unless they're told it explicitly every 10 minutes. I know that's not the most subtle little foreshadowing, but come on, who's the real monster eating her rare steak? Which of course is... Monster Shadowing. Wow, I didn't even notice that the first time I watched this. In fact, it's only your wins video that's actually made me realize it. I'm half tempted to take a sin off for pointing that out to me, but I'm also half tempted to add a sin for describing it as not that subtle when actually I think it probably was kind of subtle. It was subtle from my point of view at least. So you know what? I will do both. Or, you know, neither. It's the same result really, isn't it? <laughs> Y'all jokers must be crazy. Dang it, I love this demonstration. Smith's excitement when he realizes the guns are functional and then the over-the-shoulder perfect accuracy while we shoot with him and then these glowing red perfect shot circles? What a scene! Oh, so many of these points you make are just such great points. I've had to fight off the urge to make everything I say just be, I agree, I'm removing a sin. And you know what, I can't hold off that urge any longer, so I'm just gonna remove a sin. They cut most of this scene out and it's definitely something that should have been left in. It legitimizes Harley's previous profession as she psychoanalyzes everyone, and shows her even darker side while she uses those skills to mess with people just because she's upset. Them cussing out great scenes should not be a win. I'd like to talk about something that comes up in negative reviews. Plot structure. You have to understand that Harley's story is told in flashbacks throughout the film because she's being developed slowly to tie into our main theme of love. Up until this moment, she just seemed crazy. Now we know that the Joker loves her back and it gives her this moment with Deadshot to propel his arc forward. The structure is well planned out. Eh, was it though? Now we should uh, get a drink sometime. Appropriately timed courting. <laughs> Hang on, should that really be a win though? Enchantress and Incubus aren't the most complex villains, but they didn't really need to be. This movie is about getting the Suicide Squad together over a common goal. Visually, I think they're awesome. Her mind control powers play with our theme and test each of our anti-heroes so that they have to come together. And it's not like they're boring. Ancient magical dudes are upset they were locked in jars for a millennia, taking their wrath out on the technology-obsessed humans. I kind of have to disagree here. Although I do think what you said was mostly accurate, the villains in this film aren't the main focus, and therefore a simple villain plot makes sense for this movie. If you wanted to have the Suicide Squad as it was with all of its characters in place, and have a complex villain plot in there as well, you'd probably be reaching the end of what you can achieve within a film. The kind of thing you're looking at there would probably need a full TV show to do it justice, because you probably can't fit a complex villain plot and everything else that Suicide Squad has into a feature length film. Therefore for this movie, a simple villain plot makes sense. And does it work? Eh, kinda. It's not like the simple villains we got ruined the movie, but it could have been a lot better. Because, well, I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about the actual movie here. But there are two main ways I think this movie could have improved its villain plot without becoming overcomplicated. The first way, and by far the simplest way, would be to have no villains at all, and replace them with something along the lines of a natural disaster, an accident, or anything inanimate really. Let's say what's happened is an experiment has gone wrong in a lab somewhere and it's causing earthquakes. Or maybe it's emitting some kind of signal that causes everyone within range of it to go into a ballistic murderous rage. Ballistic, ballistic murderous rage. rage. The Suicide Squad's job is to break into the lab and shut down whatever it is that's causing the problem. That way the audience isn't really expecting anything complex from their villain. And when the plot ends up being simple, they won't be disappointed because that's what they expected. The second way that, in my opinion, they could have improved the villain plot is probably one that you have thought of as well. And it's- my throat is actually quite sore after doing that ballistic murderous rage thing. Okay, whatever, it's kind of made my voice a bit gruffer and I like that, so let's get on with it anyway. The second way I think you probably could improve the villain plot in this film is something that you've probably already thought of yourself as well. Make the Joker be the villain. Because at the moment he's just kind of there. His subplot doesn't really add that much to the film, but by making him the big baddie, I feel like you could really expand on that plot and just really flesh it out to make it satisfying. 